Welcome to Vinyl Dance on channel 33 RPM. This is a segment where I check out cool music rooms across the vinyl community and around the world. Today I got vinyl dance and music rooms of all kinds. And as always, you guys have impressed me with the stuff you sent over. All right, this first one is from John, 48 years old from Wisconsin. This one is super cool. John writes, this is my multi-purpose vinyl den. It's created to be an homage to dive bars all over. I love that, man. I'm definitely a fan of dive bars, hole in the wall restaurants, that kind of stuff. He says, it is divided to support my three favorite sports teams and my love of music. Video games, pool, darts, slots, poker, and air hockey, all cool stuff. He says, I have a Cambridge Audio AXR100 receiver, Fluence RT85 turntable, Sony 5 disc changer, Denon dual tape deck, and a sound design 8-track player. All played through two sets of Bose Acoustamass Redline speakers. I think I said that right, Acoustamass? Other than my turntable, my equipment is housed in a repurposed Crossley jute box with bubbler tubes. That's cool, man. I dig that. He says, I almost have 300 records, 5045s, 400 CDs, tapes, and 8-tracks. It's a music, listening room, and party central for my gatherings this is i love this man i just said i like the whole dive bar thing i've done a lot of, of these vinyl den segments and this is the first time someone has sent me pictures trying to create a dive bar in their basement i love the signs i love the vintage candy dispensers those slot machines the pool table i dig the bar there too it's got no crown royal but i will look past that john it's all good uh, i dig the pinball the dragon's lair i believe that's one of the one up arcade versions right and of course a shout out for having the channel 33 rpm youtube channel on in the background awesome all right this next one comes from michael coles in tacoma washington usa michael didn't leave his age he says been a music lover since i was a pre-teenager my dad had a record shop in the early 70s and people called him side two Thus, the music room is named in honor of him. It says his dad passed away in 2017 and he named his music room Cole Psy 2.1. I dig that, man. That's a nice tribute to your dad. He says, finished it in 2021, LOL. Isn't that the whole thing? None of us are ever finished with our music rooms and our setups, right? It's, um, it's all about the journey, not the destination. He says, uh, love vinyl quality over quantity and digital music. So kind of got the best of both worlds. It says his music room is a small room about 16 by 20 feet in his condo. For an app, he's got an NAD M10 Master Series streamer. He's got a MusaShare, MusaShare, I think that's how you say it. Uh, X7 KT88 integrated tube amp. That looks cool, man. For a turntable, he's got a Techniques SL 1500C direct drive with an Ortofone 2M Blue stylus and the built-in Phono preamp. I've been really curious about the, the new Techniques SL uh, turntables. The speakers are, what do you say, half your sp for speakers. The one I see here is a KLH Model 5. Those are beautiful looking speakers, man. I love the mid-century modern styling. And those are new speakers. They retail for about $1,200 each nowadays, 2,400 bucks for the pair. And a little bar in his closet. And there is a bottle of Crown Royal there awesome good pick good space i dig the f I, I dig the overall feel of the space it's a cool chill zone all right let's head across the ocean this comes from another mike this is mike in the netherlands he says he is 54 years old and has a passion for 70s and 80s music from pop to disco he says he started collecting records about three to four years ago from scratch and now owns almost 800 records 85 percent of them are vg plus or near mint and everything he buys goes into new outer sleeves and gets a naga oka inner sleeve he says i love to use the record shop style of flip bin so i chose zomo storage cases they have a perfect height I love those record dividers and that overall record store look. If I could redo my room again from scratch, I may, I may go for record bins over the Ikea shelves just because I love, I love flipping through. I love that, that whole feel, man. That's cool. I wasn't familiar with a company he talked about, Zomo. I think that's how you say it, Zomo. But I checked them out and they sell both cubes and bins. And yeah, there's some pretty cool stuff. Okay, Mike from the Netherlands continues to write, as I used to be a radio DJ at local pirate radio stations, I like to use two turntables and a retro style mixer to create mixtapes and occasionally upload them on my YouTube channel, Woosh. Woosh, I like that name for channel. Here's a screenshot of his channel and I will link to his Woosh channel below this video. 
He says, within the same room, I have a small desk where I repair old Marantz receivers as a hobby. And so this is my default amplifier brand. Man, love, love those old school Marantz. He says, my loudspeakers are old, Behringer, what it says, B2031Ps. He says, not even close to an audiophile speaker, but I can't get rid of them as they sound really good. That's the whole thing. Audiophile this, mid-fi that, ultimately, in my opinion, it doesn't matter. It's what you like and what your ears like. That's all, that's all that really matters. Check out also all of those blank tapes, man. I was a huge fan of TDK blank tapes when I was a kid. The 90 minute ones are my favorite because you could pretty much get one full record recorded on one side and the other another full record on the other side, right? About 45 minutes each. And my friends and I used to swap records and record them off each other. And, and that's how we did it because you don't have a ton of money when you're a kid. Yeah, so I asked, I asked Mike about that awesome blank tape collection. And he wrote, yeah, the blank tapes are amazing. Very expensive to collect, so I stopped buying. What people are asking for sealed tapes is surprisingly high. He says, I also bought some via jouse.com. Have you guys ever heard of this? I think it's pronounced jouse, J-A-U-C-E. He says, this is an auction site from Japan for buyers outside of Japan. Some very rare stuff. That was a good tip, Mike. Thank you for sharing that. I checked out the website and just for fun, I typed in Black Sabbath and I found a ton of cool stuff. Okay, this comes from Bruce. Bruce, 43 years old from Sophia, North Carolina. He says, I've been collecting for about seven years and acquired my parents' records to start my collection. He says he has about 1,200 albums and 500 or so 45s. He says his record room is in his house in a spare bedroom. He writes, a jukebox is a Rockola 474 from 1978 and works well. I would love a jukebox like that. How cool is that, man? He says, my turntable is a U-turn orbit with a red Ortofone 2M stylus. My speakers are Samson bookshelf speakers. I've said this before. I think Ortofone is probably the most popular cartridge in the vinyl community, judging that solely on the submissions I get on vinyl dens. Particularly the red, yeah, but the blue seems to be super popular. He writes, the other turntable is a sound design all-in-one record cassette, eight-track stereo. He says it was his grandmother's from the 80s. So, of course, with a name like Bruce Wayne, you definitely need at least a few Batman-related things in your room, and I am definitely seeing that here, including that cool neon sign. I also noticed Bruce has a wide range of different genres of music, which is cool. I see that quite a bit in these Vinyl Den videos, where people like tons of different kinds of music, which is really cool. Because if you remember back in the day, you're kind of stuck in your lane, right? If you liked hard rock, it was hard rock. If you like pop, you like pop. Punk, you like punk. And there wasn't a lot of crossover. So it's really cool to see a lot more crossover nowadays. Like just in this room, I'm seeing Lady Gaga, Michael Jackson, Ted Nugent, Korn. Anyway, I do dig this music space. Do you want your room to be featured on a future episode of Vinyl Dens? I have a full description below this video on how to submit your stuff. Check it out. I would love to see your music rooms. Now, back to the video. Channel 33. RPM. Okay, what do we have here? This is from Nelson in Cincinnati. Nelson writes, my room is in my basement. He's got 250 records, 1,000 CDs, and he also streams Apple Music on his Apple TV. Uh, Nelson writes, I am a school teacher, but my other hobby besides playing bass and listening to music is buying vintage audio gear off Facebook Marketplace. I'm always buying and trying. I love fixing things up, and I keep the best stuff and make a profit off of what I sell. It does help pay for just about everything in my room. That's cool, man, a self-sustaining hobby. Because currently he has a Kenwood KD5077 turntable. That's a cool one. It's fully automatic, with direct drive. He also uses an Ortofone bronze cartridge. So we have Ortofone again, but he stepped it up with the bronze. His integrated amp is a KA8150, again, Kenwood. And that's connected to some AR9 speakers. I love those old vintage Kenwood amps and receivers. I have a Kenwood KA601 in my closet. Totally dig it. Sounds good. Okay, what else? He says he has a Northern Lights projector. He got that for 18 bucks off of Amazon for a ceiling effect. That's cool, man. It's trippy. Definitely pairs well with Dark Side of the Moon. 
And then he says, through the door behind my music room, you can see the British pub that I built during the pandemic. <laughs> he says it like it's no big deal. Yeah, there's a there's a British pub through through the door there or, or in the back. That is freaking cool, man. You have mad skills. That That is an awesome British pub. I hear a lot of people kind of did a lot of home improvement projects during COVID. And just here's another example. I absolutely love it. Okay, this next one comes from Bradley, who is 16 years old and he is from South Carolina, USA. He says, I was raised on music for as long as I can remember. My mom raised me on artists such as Muddy Waters and Journey. My dad raised me on country. My uncle showed me Guns N' Roses, uh, Maiden, Metallica, and bands like that. Awesome. Bradley says he has about 120 records, 140 CDs, and 48 cassette tapes. He says his stereo consists of an Insignia Bluetooth record player. I believe that's the house brand from Best Buy. And he says he hooks that up to uh, his stereo system, which includes a receiver, cassette tech, radio, CD players. And he's got some speakers. Uh, doesn't specify what kind of stereo that is, what kind of speakers, but he says he got them all at once because I was anxious to get my stereo and it works just fine. He says, I would love any advice for my collecting and the room as a whole. Um, I guess advice is, is just buy the gear you like and that sounds good to you and that you can afford. And just to remember this whole record collecting and music collecting thing as i've said before is it's a journey it's not a destination right so keep upgrading your gear as money allows don't overspend get the best that you can afford and get stuff that sounds good to your ears doesn't matter what other people say if some people there's always going to be someone who doesn't like your gear buy what you like and what sounds good to you bradley this is super cool man you're off to a great start and welcome to the world of music collecting all right this next one comes from stewart in louisiana he writes hey frank i'm a 48 year old guy from mandeville louisiana which is about 40 minutes north of New Orleans. New Orleans, New Orleans. I love New Orleans. I've been there a few times. He says he's been collecting physical media since he was 10 years old, and he writes, Stuart writes, even though I've been a musician my entire adult life, I'm not much of an audiophile. It's all about the culture and the art for me, not so much the delivery system. Totally cool. I get it. We are all into this for different reasons and all have different priorities. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. He writes, my family and I run an independent record store minutes away. It's called 22 Sound Vinyl Records. So I'm able to stay keyed in to modern music and trends. He says, my space takes an entire half of the second story of my home. How cool is that? He said, the main room houses most of his records, CDs, and cassettes. All right, what else does Stewart say? He has about 400 cassettes, 2,500 records, and somewhere between two and 3,000 CDs. You know you have a good collection when you've lost count, right? He says, once inside this room, there's a listening room off to the right that has my system and a TV to watch music videos, as well as a few magazines, Blu-rays, books, and recently acquired records. He says, my five-year-old son and I spend a lot of time here watching TV, spinning records, and putting together jigsaw puzzles. Awesome, great family time. In terms of gear, he has a project debut carbon turntable and a TAC CD slash cassette deck run through a Marant NR1200 receiver and Klipsch speakers. He also has an Okie Noki record cleaning machine, which he says is essential. Cool space, man. It's clean, well organized. I dig the colors. And again, Stuart, as we've been seeing, is into a variety of music and shares his passion with his son. How cool is that? Okay, you're going to want to watch this next one until the end. This comes from Simon, 44 years old in Cornwall, Ontario. He says he works uh, in news as a videographer and has spent most of his career working in television. Simon writes, I grew up around music. My dad worked in the industry throughout my childhood, mainly for Stiff Records and Island Records. He says, I grew up collecting vinyl and CDs, mainly CDs, and he sold his CD collection in the early 2000s to help uh, fund a trip to Alaska. He says, in 2017, I was helping my stepfather clean out his garage and came across his vinyl collection. He also worked in the music industry for Atlantic Records in the 80s. 
He very kindly gifted me his collection of about 300 LPs, including Zeppelin, Zappa, and so on, and my bug for music was back. He says he has around 4,000 LPs, 2,000 CDs, and a few A-tracks and cassettes. Simon writes, I got banished to the loft a couple years ago, which works well as I can crank the music up here and the views are great. Plus it has a toilet, so I can be really unsociable, right? Just need a fridge in there and you never have to leave. I see channel 33 RPM on the computer, so that is also very cool. And it really is very cool. I mean, sitting here in a basement in Canada and looking at all these photos and people watching channel 33 RPM around the world. I mean, does it get any better than that? Uh, what else? Check out those speakers. Those are JBL 4311Bs. And Simon explains that those were originally owned by Dave Robinson, the owner and founder of Stiff Records. And they were gifted to him by his dad when he left Stiff. If you're not familiar with Stiff, they were, or are, a British indie label that specialized in punk and new wave and other stuff, but a lot of punk and new wave. Uh, Simon writes, they were in Dave's office for years and were taken on the stiff tour. I wasn't sure what that meant, so I had to look it up. And from what I understand, stiff records to put on these big package tours. And the first was in 1977 and included Elvis Costello. So Simon writes, here's a picture of Elvis Costello on the stiff tour train and the speakers in the back are his actual speakers that's awesome man this is a bit of rock and roll history uh, he says he also has the original film and audio reels from the stiff tour the one that never got released as pictured i'm pretty unsure what to do with these so if anyone is watching this channel and has any ideas on restoring those please let me know that is super cool. So, I mean, definitely have an awesome chill out space and a little bit of rock and roll history as well. All right, 33ers, let me know what you thought of today's dance in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the week. I'll be back again really soon. Until then, keep on spinning.